All righty. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. It is uh, eight uh, or August eleventh, twenty twenty two, eleven twenty one a.m. my lunchtime, and thought I would just do a quick overview of my Sunday uh, my Sunday sermon. Um, in lieu of or in I guess in spirit of going back to school and uh, talking about how we are leaders and um, I used a theme from uh, Troy Shoemaker, which uh, he is the uh, president of, of Pensacola College. So I give a, I, I start there and uh, then we go into leadership. Leadership may be in your office. It may be Maybe um, in some function, maybe you're in the ministry, maybe you're um, leading something, but uh, this is more so uh, to target the ability to improve our leadership. Um, Dr. Shoemaker, he loves his students. I know I believe they call him um, Papa Shoe, I think is the word they use. He... Uh, He's obviously been around a long time. He's he's been a uh, in education, Christian education, for quite some time, um, and his uh, uh, leadership he encourages growth and future of Christian leaders with a foundation for God's calling. A foundation. He supervised fourteen hundred employees or five thousand students, and uh, I love his quote where he says. It is not what you do in leadership, but who you are. Isn't that powerful? And that's kind of the theme I want to bring it in. So let's let's go to Exodus 18, and uh, we'll start in verses 13, and um, we will uh, finish, I think, around 25, uh, and then we will uh, we we will pray. So. Let's see if I can get, I don't know if I can do it, um, I want to see the screen, no, I don't want that, I don't know if I can see that or that's being seen, uh, prob probably is, so uh, I'll just start right here, so um, the word of God says in Exodus eighteen thirteen. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from morning until the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that you do that, you, that thou doest to the people? Why sitteth thou your, thyself alone? And all the people stand by thee from morning till eve. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. Verse 16, When they have a matter, they come, to, they, came, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another. And I do make them know the statutes, the statutes of God in his laws. And Moses father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away, both thou, both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself. Hearken, or listen, now unto my voice I will give counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people of, uh, to Godward, that you mayest bring the causes unto God, and thou shalt teach them ordinance and laws, and shall show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Verse 21, Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and placing over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifty. Um, ruler, yeah. 
rulers of thousands, hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of ten. And then, and, and let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that even great matter they bring unto thee, but every small thing that, that they, that small thing they shall judge. So, shall it be easier for thyself? And thy shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this very do this thing, and God command thee, then ye, ye, thou shalt be able to endure, and all the people shall also go to their place in peace. So Moses heard or hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law, and he did all that he said. And Moses chose able men out of Israel and made them heads of uh, over the, the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifty, and rulers of ten. Uh, and I'll, I'll just stop there. So basically we're reading here, uh, we're going to talk about Moses' leadership. Um, but let's pray real quick. Lord, be with this message. Lord, allow me to, to, to bring the things that you would have me bring in this message and help people that may be in need of this. And Lord, help me, Lord, that uh, this is... Uh, opening me up to look at some things, and, and Lord, that you teach me, Lord, as a humble servant. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, so Moses' leadership, this is where we're at. Um, this is where God is showing Moses how to lead. Uh, Moses was attempting to judge and settle all the disputes in, in Israel. Um, and he was beginning to, it was beginning to be too much for him. Um, now, we know in Acts 6, 1 through 7, um, we know that this is the birth and growth of the church. And that passage, again, is uh, Acts 6, 1 through 7. And it kind of it kind of dovetails in from this one. But this passage uh, is the beginning of Israel's basic legal and justice system. Um, it introduces the Mosaic Covenant, um, and it be became clear and uh, applicable to the problems that were ha they happened as they adapted to the law. So um, this was kind of the template, if you will. And by the way, the Bible tells us uh, we can solve our problems today. Today we can read our Bibles. And um, they didn't have Bibles back then. So we could go home and read our Bibles and, uh, and, and get this knowledge that God is communicating. That's how God communicates through his inspiration of... Um, Holy men inspired by God. The people who become so the people are getting angry. Basically, the the narrative here, um, they they they're getting angry because they're not getting these things solved uh, quick enough. Well, well, you, they lined up day and night, so there's a big line. So it was a while before he got to it, um, and uh, it was getting more stressful for him. And Jethro's advice was kind of timely. He said, uh, as a as a suggestion, subject to will of God, if God command thee so, in verse 23. So he's not saying, he's saying that um, if it be God's will. His father-in-law was pointing out that uh, he could manage his time better, essentially. And uh, Moses acted on this uh, uh, advice from Jethro. Uh, and then almost uh, certain evidence, it's, it's certain evidence that he understood uh, God was communicating to him through Jethro. Um, sometimes we work under tremendous stress. We must recognize our activities and time and delegate some of those duties. You know, when I was in the Army, um, I had folks, I had my first, my first leadership role um, was a learning for me. I, um, you know, I remember our, one of our tasks were we were to clean the bathrooms and then clean the officers and the enlisted rooms and take the trash out and all this. And I was friends with these folks. I went to school with these folks. So the challenge for me was um, getting them to do it. And um, I always ended up doing it myself. And it took a while for me to learn. It just kind of, you know, it's kind of like, um, man, I mean, I, I can't be either a friend. I have to. I have to take care of these tasks and things that need need to be done. So, um, 
that's difficult sometimes. And sometimes you have to learn to, uh, to, to delegate. And I couldn't keep up with the amount of work that had to be done after we worked. We had to do all the cleaning and stuff. So leaders are serving my number one. The number one um, tenant or bullet I want to bring here is leaders are servant minded. Uh, the foundation is nothing. Found, so this is the, the servant minded is the foundation and nothing beneath, uh, nothing was beneath uh, Moses. He was very, very humble. How do we know this? Well, we can look at verse 13 and again, and it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people and the people stood by Moses from morning until not evening, so that's a that's a, a, a Moses serving his people, and uh, we see a shepherd's heart with Moses, right? So the problem was, uh, or with Moses being service money, it was limited um, on what he could actually do. So uh, he was wearing himself out, and it was unsustainable, and uh, um, unsustainable, and not good. So. So let's look and see where this says. Let's go down, shoot down to 17 the month. And his father in law, Moses' father in law, said unto him, The things that you do is not good, right? Um, thou shalt surely wear away, both thou, both, both thou or you, and this people that is with thee, for this is not, this is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Leadership is not lording over people. In the biblical sense, um, to do what sh what what they should be doing, right? So uh, the most significant mistake leaders often try uh, to do is they establish an authority or their position. That's a mistake. Um, and then the other is uh, you know verse eighteen, trying to do it yourself. Um, last last verse, well, thou art not able to perform it thyself. God tells him this, um, and. He is getting that uh, feedback um, from Jethro. So look at look, let's look at number two. Leaders are dependent on God. A leader's attitude uh, uh, should be focused primarily to God. Uh, he should be a man of prayer and asking God to help him. A leader should focus on God's best, what's best, God's best for the people. And uh, we see in verse nineteen. Um, let's read that. It says, Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, you counsel, and God shall or will be with you, <laughs> with thee or thee, you and thou for the people to the Godward that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. So Jethro in 19 um, tells there's a better way. Moses to bring his their causes to God. Uh, we know this happened. We know that um, when we start thinking about the the, 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 the levels of leadership that were established, um, those are, if you can think of it from a legal side, it'd be a, you know, here's here's the local judge, and here's the regional judge, and here's the, you know, and it kind of exacerbates out like that. But um, we see um, this in examples that um, there were some things that those folks couldn't answer, and they had to come to Moses, but it was vetted all through that before he got to him. Talking about, um, I'll give you one example. Um, uh, there was a lady that um, her father died, and she had no brothers, and it was about inheritance. And God had, and Moses had to come to God uh, because those layers couldn't answer that question. So, um, so you, you, it's, you, you're not always popular in this uh, sense. Um, this mistake of trying to please everybody in a political sense, you just can't. Um, but it needs to be right before God, and you have to, uh, you have to, you have to know that God is um, the direct. You got to be sound in your relationship with God. So again, number three, leaders are principled. Uh, leadership is not just giving orders, not demanding results. The best leaderships are discovered from the wise or the rational rationale behind them. You know, you have kids at home and, and you tell them not to do something, they say, why? You know, and, and I'll say this as a leader, um, in my leadership style, I would say, I would ask the question, why, to a problem five times. I learned that somewhere in some book, but uh, you, you actually figure out what the root problem is. You, you know, uh, 
we got a problem with the water. Well, why do we have a problem? Well, you know, we didn't get, it won't come out of the faucet. Well, why won't it come out of the faucet? Well, because um, it's not coming from the street. Well, why is it not coming from the street? Um, well, you know, um, we didn't pay our bill. We didn't pay our bill, that's why you don't have water. Five times. So those are just, uh, just a, I'm just giving you a couple uh, little things that I've used, I use in, uh, in, in my leadership. So what is the principle? Teaching and ownership. Teaching to think. That's what we want. If you look at verse 20, and thou shalt teach them. Um, verse 20. Verse 20. Thou shalt teach. And he committed himself to the communication. Um, oh, excuse me. He, so you're teaching ownership and you're teaching them to think. And we see this in verse 20. And thou shalt teach them the ordinance of law. And thou shalt show them the way within they must walk and the work that they must do. So you got to teach them. you got to show them. They don't know if they don't. You only know what you know, right? So uh, Moses, he's committed uh, himself to communicating, communicating. If you think about last Wednesday night, what Pastor brought up, or Wednesday night, it's just yesterday. He brings up the message in um, Ephesians. And um, he talks about your identity in Christ. He talks about, um, um, you know, um, you know, like uh, the Apostle Paul. He set the he set the context of him, and and uh, what was and what was he trying to do in the letter? What well, he's teaching in the letter. He's showing in the letter. Um, he is, um, you know, wanting people to think and, and see these messages and read them, and. Uh, you know the big thing is it's it's about uh, it's about teaching and uh, teaching the thing. He laid out a vision, right? So you look at twenty, and thou shalt teach. That is a vision, right? He developed a plan, and thou shalt show them. So you develop a plan. So you have to. I use the tell, show, do, and review, um, but teach them ordinance of law. So you teach them the laws because. You know they didn't have a Bible, so you had to teach them. You know the the more you know the moral law, the Ten Commandments, um, and um, how they are going to walk and uh, the work that they must do. So he's communicating all this. He's given the vision uh, by teaching them, and he develops a plan all in one. So uh, you could see that. So okay. So if we look at uh, the next tenet, uh, number four, uh, leaders are delegators. He selects, moreover, the pride of enablement. So uh, he selects and trains leaders, right? And um, leaders can be identified, and we know that's in verse 21. Leaders can, can identify others who can carry the load, and you can entrust them with the responsibility, looking for that candidate who is who is the uh, a person who can delegate any duties or tasks? I think of uh, another piece is, is is the candidate able? Is the are they a uh, is their ability there? Is their skill? Is their strength? Is their knowledge? Um, is their fear of God? Uh, is there a reverence uh, to God spiritually in worship and work and in worship and worshipful? Um, I'll change that to worship. Worship. I don't like that one. And then men of truth. Are they men of truth? They depended on uh, honesty and integrity, uh, not covetous. Uh, covetousness is uh, others uh, first, and are you putting others first and not wanting what other people have, not aspiring for a promotion, not aspiring or, or, or going after an advancement, uh, uh, an advancement or a promotion, um, not trying to be in power and having all the control, um, those are um, those are traits and, and characteristics of a leader that can do these things. A delegation is very important, um, and being able to rule them and provide have all the people of able men and these things. He talks about in twenty one. So the next one is chapter five or uh, um, uh, number five, 
which is leaders are decisive makers. So if we look at 22 here, let's go through and look. Uh, a decisive Leaders are decision makers. They can make a decision. Our value as leaders is not in the work, but in our decisions. Let me say that again. The value as leaders is not in our work, but in our decisions. I like what Kerry Schmidt said. Indecision is a decision. Leaders are decision makers. Your influence depends on your decisions on how you will serve them. The decisions should be made by the closest that are in the action. So um, how do I give this analogy? Let's say it's a corporation and it has a president and a CEO all the way down to uh, a department manager. Well, you want that department manager to be able to make those decisions because he's closest to the pulse. He's closest to the problem. So you want that leader to be able to make that decision. Um, and uh, uh, the weight of, the, uh, of a ministry or a job or, 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 or um, um, any of your responsibilities, uh, decisions can be tough on leaders, right? Um, but there must be a passion for seeing how God will bring it to light. So it's tough, but we've got to allow God to work through us and bring it to light. Um, you need somebody uh, if uh, you need to, you need to get somebody if you cannot uh, make or embrace a decision. Maybe you need somebody to come alongside of you uh, and make decisions. It's just suggestions uh, because sometimes you, in, remember uh, indecision is a decision. So leaders are open to advice. Um, so look at verse twenty three, and thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so. Then thou shalt be able, okay, be able, uh, be able, and you're you got to be open, right? And all, um, all this people shall go also go to their place in peace. So um, uh, leaders are open. You you will you will give advice. First of all, you get advice from everybody, right? Uh, and just know that you're going to get plenty of advice um, if advice and God's direction move you, be humbled enough to move. you got to be humble to move. Um, and all these people shall go to their place in peace. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, you got to be humble to, to, to move on it. Leaders uh, should be looking for the best idea to win. Um, not necessarily theirs or, or, or anything else, but should be looking for the best ideas. Um, you can, you can, you cannot have a ministry or your office in a professional setting um, that can grow a leader in his capacity. Um, you know, uh, every contribution or, or everybody contribute uh, contributes, um, and by doing that, um, things are limitless. And if you are, uh, if, if you if if a ministry that can only grow in the leader's capacity, in other words, we're limiting ourselves. So, well-established Moses, okay, um, think about it. I mean, we're talking about Moses here, right? Moses. Uh, he could have just told uh, Jethro, hey, man, you're just a shepherd. Um, don't tell me how to run my country, right? Um, however, that's not the case. We see Moses... Uh, accepts his advice, right? How many people accept the advice from people around us? And I'm not saying all all advice all advice is good, but you get my point there. Um, so God may bring it um, to you in a form of an unlikely source. Somebody you didn't man, you you like I didn't know where that came from, but yeah, that uh, he'll bring it to you from um, uh, different levels. It'll come from people you wouldn't expect. And uh, you have to be able to be humble to move and to listen. Um, leaders get discouraged advice, and they get encouraged uh, advice. So both discouraged and encouraging advice from several directions. Um, so how do you resolve that? You surround yourself with good counsel, and you set boundaries. Honest feedback is essential. you got to shoot straight. Uh, 
the great enemy, the great enemy is our fear. If you do not have faith in God and the people around you to provide sound advice that you can trust, uh, then you'll constantly be looking over your shoulder thinking there's an agenda. Uh, living in the sense of lack, lack of control. Remember, if God does not want you there, he will move you on. So this should give you comfort and security in your position to lead. Um, you shouldn't put on the airs. Um, you should not have to maintain control with a fist. It is a it is it is a strong identity in Christ. Your position in Christ. Remember Wednesday night we talked about what our uh, who we were and, and 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 as saints and our position with Christ and where we are. We should feel secure we, as a leader. You should be that way too because you're identified in Christ as well. Um, if you not or uh, if not all you have. If you don't have that identity in Christ, all you have is an echo chamber, right? You just have an echo changer all around you with bobbleheads. Um, and they're never going to challenge you, ever, because they don't want to rock the boat. Um, I think of Moses, um, what happened in light of the past? What, what happens? Well, God supplies him strength. He gives him peace for the people. And empowerment for new leaders. If thou do these things, the people, here he goes, that then thou shalt be able to endure, okay, give you peace, and all these people shall also go to their place in peace. So he's going to give you this, and he's also going to empower many, many leaders. So, number seven, leaders are productive. Moses took the advice and then he executed. And you see in verse 25, And Moses chose able men out of Israel, and he made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of a hundred, rulers of fifties, and rulers of ten. Think about that corporate um, um, org chart, if you will, the president, vice president, directors, managers, department. You know, that kind of, he's got this, he's setting this up, and these things, uh, these people judge, and, um, you know, it's kind of like when you go to court and you get a speed ticket and uh, you start off by going to a um, uh, maybe a smaller court and the outcome was not favorable. So you appeal. Well, what happens? You go to the next court. Similar to that setup is going on here um, in this uh, uh, young uh, country of Israel. And uh, leaders must go beyond the idea. To execute the concept, they have to make it happen, right? So let me let me say this: in this application, in a role of leadership, you may be tempted uh, on focusing the doings of leadership rather than the beings. Let me say that again: in a leadership role, you may be tempted on doing of the on the doing of leadership rather than the being. So I would submit prayer that you need to be, you need to, I would submit prayerfully to find the value of putting time, uh, putting in the time to become equipped to lead for your future and other people. Essentially, being able to uh, be prepared for things that you're leading. Moses was, and we know Moses was prepared. Remember that this generation of leaders need to be encouraged. Because we need to let God mold them, and everybody, I, I, you know, in leadership, always wants the quick recipe, the fast, easy, uh, biblical leadership in a problem. Unfortunately, I can't teach patience. I always tell folks uh, when they start a job, um, you can't say that you don't like it if you've only been there a week. You, you know, you got to be there a while to determine if you like it or not. So uh, that's one of the pieces there. As a leader, we must let go of the weight of the work and trust God to make it His will. Always ask Him for His will. God placed you in this position because He wanted you there. Right? We must remember that. That God ordains all leadership. Psalm 75 7. But God is the judge 
and put it down one and set it up one, another. Let's talk about leadership there. So in closing, I'm going to give you uh, three things to, to, to consider. Those are some applications that we just talked about. Uh, you know, being in prayer, uh, putting in the time, uh, uh, remember to encourage uh, people around you. Don't look for the quick uh, uh, leadership deal here. Um, and uh, don't put the weight. Uh, uh, you got to let go of that weight of the work and trust God's will. So let me ask you this. And this is, again, this is, um, these are things that in maybe in your job, uh, maybe in your association, maybe, uh, maybe in church, maybe leadership, maybe teaching, maybe whatever. And you have some authority of leadership. Um, how can, you got to ask yourself, how can I focus on the beings of leadership? Focus on the beings of leadership. Number two, the qualities of Moses' leadership. Do I see as the strength in me? Do I see as a strength in me? What are the qualities of leadership do I see that is, uh, is a strength in me? Uh, and lastly, which characteristic of Moses' leadership do I need to develop? I think that... Uh, that's where we're at. I mean, focus on the beings of leadership. Um, I've enjoyed uh, just walking through this a little bit. Moses, I'm a huge, huge fan. And uh, I thought I would uh, bring this message tonight. So let's close. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to go through this message, Lord, and allow me uh, just to bring it forward, Lord, and hope it's a blessing to somebody and somebody becomes inspired or is a doer because of the message lord it's you're the glory it goes all to you i give you all the glory lord lord i love you and i thank you in jesus precious name amen okay folks thank you very much i appreciate your time god bless